14th of January 1953, an employee at the Stanley Park of Vancouver, Canada, made a chilling discovery which shook the whole nation. Wednesday 14th of January 1953, Albert Tong, a groundskeeper at the Stanley Park of Vancouver, Canada, was clearing a brush, when something crushed under his feet. He dug deeper beneath the brush and what revealed itself sent chills down his spine. Albert immediately notified authorities, who arrived at the scene to find the skeletal remains of the two children, who were bludgeoned to death using a hatchet which was laying nearby. Concealed with a woman's raincoat, the bodies were laying in a straight line with the soles of their feet facing each other. Items found at the scene include the murder weapon, a hatchet commonly used by letters and shinglers, a woman's raincoat in which the bodies were concealed, a woman's size 7.5 penny loafer, two children aviation caps and a metal lunchbox. The remains were taken to the coroner's office, who determined that the murder of the children took place several years ago, most likely in 1947. Their cause of death was determined to be blunt force head injury and the wounds in their skull were confirmed to be made by the hatchet found at the crime scene. The medical examiner reached the conclusion that one of the victims was a female. This was later proved to be incorrect as a DNA test conducted in 1998 revealed that both of the victims were male and that they were half-brothers. The DNA report determined that the boys were between the age of 6 and 10 at the time of their unfortunate demise. The news about the shocking discovery spread like wildfire and soon it was on the front page of every newspaper. The media dubbed the case as the babes in the wood murder. Investigators were trying everything they could to find the perpetrator. They interviewed witness after witness, but none of them had any viable information. Photographs of the items found at the scene were distributed throughout North America. Records of the missing person cases were checked. Plaster casts of children's faces based on the shape of their skulls were made, but all of the investigators' efforts to identify the victims amounted to nothing, as their investigations were hampered by the incorrect presumption that one of the victims was a female. With years going by and no solid lead coming in, the murder case of the babes in the boat went cold. Sometime during 1980s, the bones of the victims ended up at the Vancouver Police Museum and were placed on exhibition until Vancouver Police Sergeant Brian Honeyborn took up the position as the head of Provincial Unsolved Homicide Unit and reopened the case. Honeyborn recollected the evidence and with the help of an expert managed to have DNA extracted from the teeth of children's skulls. After extracting DNA samples, Honeyborn sent them for testing and had majority of the bones cremated and scattered in the sea. The result of the DNA test revealed that the victims were two boys instead of one girl and one boy as initial reports suggested, and that the boys were half-siblings between the age 6 and 10. With this discovery, the case took on a new direction and Honeyborn was keen on solving the murders. The year was 2018, consumer DNA databases like Ancestry.com, 23andMe were proving to be monumental in solving decades-old cold cases. Detectives at Vancouver Police Department believed that modern DNA techniques held the key to solving the decades-old mystery of the babes in the woods. So in order to finally discover the real identities of the boys, they put DNA samples into online databases. They soon found a distant relative who lived in Vancouver and with that information, the real identities of the boys were finally revealed. David Dalton, born on 27th February 1940, and Derek Dalton, born on 24th June 1941, were descendants of Russian emigrants who arrived in Canada at the turn of 20th century. Their mother Eileen Bosque was born in Alberta and had three children. Derek and David, along with their sister Diane, attended Henry Hodson Elementary School in Kitsilano. At the time of their murder, the boys were six to seven years old and had a relative who lived near Stanley Park, where their remains were eventually found in 1953. Dalton brothers were never reported as missing and when decades later their great-niece Ellie Brady inquired about her uncles, who she had never met, she was told that due to family's poor financial condition, the boys were taken away by the ministry, a claim which detectives found no record of. 
although we now know the real identities of the babes in the woods but the question why these kids met such an unfortunate demise and who was behind such a callous act still remains unanswered to answer these questions many theories have been presented but out of all these theories only two stand out According to this theory the babes in the woods were murdered by a relative most likely their mother Eileen Bosque who due to being unable to provide for her children committed this atrocity witnesses accounts also somewhat verify this theory as several of them claim to have seen a woman with two children who matched the general description of the boys entered the park and was later seen exiting the park screaming with her hands and dress bloodied and also missing a shoe Eileen Bosque died at the age of 78 in 1996 and the question if and why she murdered her sons will certainly remain unanswered it's hard for her to come to terms with the possibility that she may have done this says Ali Brady as her mother always described her grandmother as a lovely and gentle woman who was never violent This theory revolves around the idea that the boys were indeed taken away from their mother and put into a foster home and it was from there that they were either murdered by the foster family or a sick individual who preyed upon young kids but this theory is based on pure speculation with no solid evidence to back it up Thanks for watching our video if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe and share our videos with your friends and family as it can help us expand our reach Stay tuned for our next video until then goodbye